be look like going forward. Well, already to date, the government has heavily invested with the academy. And some headline numbers here that I won't you know, go through the detail of is effectively you know, 3,200 people in the last two years through the uh, COVID economic recovery plans, business licensing. And that's not to mention the ones that have happened before and the DLP program, which we could go into bigger depth, but it's probably near on 5,000. And there's a lot of learning guiding, guided hours, and there's been lots of positivity surrounding the courses. We've hit huge demographics in a big way. I can probably go into more detail about why I think so many women come to our courses actually over men. But we've got great demographic uses, great marketing over the years. We've learned what we've, we, we're doing, and we do it well with thousands, tens of thousands of learning hours at the academy all well received and we're hitting more you know through the short courses than we did the dlp the dlp was great lots of success reasons why that did or didn't work but the pivot since covid has impacted significantly more people the challenges that we have is we've pulled three different ways you know what we've you know we did a report with the pwc and lots of statistics came out with our trilemma you know government wants us to do a lot of digital inclusion the schools really basic stuff to get people on that journey which is all well and good and we're pulled for the commercial viability the, the r d stuff the drones the smart fields the digital twins that you've seen today already and then we've got those workplace digital skills and we understand that there's stuff that businesses should pay for uh, individuals potentially should pay for but since the kind of interest rises cost of living rises we've seen significant drop off and if we do want to see things progress in this space there has to be investment and subsidies subsidies for training it happens across the world we've got much data to show you but effectively funding and the inconsistency of our funding at the moment having to bid from you know kind of quarter to quarter means that we're always unable to really secure good tutors uh more advanced courses and we really need to work out what that is but our reputation is good but we want to drive it forward with more qualifications so the trilemma here is how do we do that in fact i'm going to get rid of this slide the economic advantages we align hugely to the government of jersey policy for obvious reasons and i'm not going to you know get you to read through how we know how this can impact all of the main areas by having higher digital skills uh, higher investment in different areas through just you know tax raises through uh, more improved productivity and services and try uh, projects like trying to keep people in their homes longer and the benefits are, are key you know digital skills we are either going to import them and that has issues we're either going to lose them because they're going to be seconded elsewhere and it's going to be remote learning from other jurisdictions or we bring that onto the island and upskill from within and it will improve not just the digital sector and wages but productivity uh, our competitiveness as an island uh, as well as all those other things we've just mentioned and we're already part of this process the digital skills that we have we've over the last four to five years embedded ourselves within the primary schools we've got microbit coding um, we've got teacher training happening there we help the high packers uh, as well to go through when it comes to the schools and the higher education we've got new computing british computer site level two qualifications that we've trialed this year and are going to see some qualifications invested with teacher training including helping their workload we've got the future schools project that we kicked off we've got things like uh, the tech hub in the inclusion section to try and get kids back into education as well as these technical things like f1 in schools where schools are struggling for digital specialists we are offering that and then what we've already discussed the short courses six month coding but we are doing projects like with the natural environment team to show how government can be more productive and use research and de development within microsoft you know, with, with not by buying new products and trying to, by actually using what they have. And we'd like to develop further into, you know, keeping people in their homes longer and uh, developing the kind of 50 plus, 60 plus uh, genre. So what do we want to do going forward? Well, we just want funding to be more secure rather than having to borrow pots from different areas and slightly pivot each time, which takes a lot of time to curate. 
we are at level four at the moment. We've progressed through the functional skills. We are doing advanced skills with six month coding courses and we want to go further with five, six and seven. But this requires us to know what's coming year on year and not just go from quarter to quarter. We are heavily involved with schools for digital inclusion, which you know government is helping us to fund, but we're going from different pots. We do help the economy with these short courses, both with government and the private sector, of which we charge them for. The research and development piece with the drone stuff, we find investment for that ourselves. We don't come with our hand out for those things. And we want to get more involved with gov and training and use those pots of money to um, help us to drive everything else further forward with those economies of scale. So, you know, looking forward, you know, what could we look like? Well, right now, we've got the £300,000 funding from government, plus business licensing funds and X, Y, Z, you know, to get us to that kind of half a million point. But if we knew what was coming year on year, we could make cost savings in year one straight away while also doing slightly more in the advanced areas for the reasons we mentioned about having to forward plan, being able to get contracts with new tutors, at better rates rather than ad hoc rates that we have to do at the moment. So even in year one, you'd be giving us less, but by guaranteeing us this funding uh, rather than us having to go to different pots, we take it from those pots straight away and go through. And then we raise our way up through those that accelerator program at a level that government uh, is comfortable with. So, you know, we've got aspirations here in 2028 of what, a real center of excellence would look like. And you may look at those numbers and say, no chance, right? But this is the negotiation point, but we can build on that at a rate that we can now discuss. But this funding needs to be secured now for the next four to five years for us to be able to make these progressions as we've just discussed. And we are good at reporting, getting our KPIs in. I won't talk you all through this. We've we've looked at those, what numbers we would give you, what markers. We can discuss those for the remainder of the year. But the kind of thing that we're really pulling back to is the Academy needs consistent funding for the next four to five years. Thank you.